Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are going to Russia, where we are going to be, I guess, just playing a trick-taking card game, because that's where the theme of this game ends. <laughs> We're talking about a trick-taking game that actually came out in 97. Uh, this is called Niet. It's an it's a interesting trick-taking game. It's designed by Stefan Dora, who did, did a game very popular called For Sale, which most people, uh, I think he's known by. This is just been reprinted by Yellow. It's two to five players. The box says 30 minutes. More on that later. But let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of Niet, everybody gets to pick which character they want to be. And look at the absolutely gorgeous and stunning artwork on these characters. Yellow has done it again. And for no apparent reason, they also include these really cool postcards, which are a lot larger than the cards. It just looks cool. And on the back, it's just basically a postcard from Russia. But they don't really do anything in the game. It's just a nice touch to look at that artwork again. Now in yet, it is a trick-taking card game, and there's four suits in this. There's yellow, which are sickles, blue, which is flags, red, which is stars, and ones with, uh, greens, which are hammers. And each uh, suit has the same cards, one all the way to 13. Now there's one of every card except the ones. In each suit, there's three ones. All the other cards is just one of, and every suit has from one to 13. Now, every round has two phases, and the first phase is a net phase where you do some sort of bidding or canceling out. Then you actually play cards in the trick-taking phase. I'm going to go over the trick-taking phase first because you might not be familiar with trick-taking games, and this won't make a whole lot of sense unless you understand this. Now, in a trick-taking game, what happens is somebody will play a card, and everybody else, if they have this suit, they must follow suit, meaning they must play the same suit that's played. So if you have a blue card, because this was what's called the lead player, or the lead of the trick, and each player would then play another card. So everyone plays one card, the lead plays this. If you have blue, you have to follow. So maybe the next player comes in and plays this. And then the next player comes in and plays this. And then the next player comes in and plays this, because they have to follow suit if they can. And the highest number of the trick wins. So in this case, this player would win the trick. They would take all these cards, they'd flip them up like this in front of themselves, and that's called a trick. Then that player who took this would start a new trick. Let's say on the next turn, this player who won this trick starts off with the green 13. They think, huh, I've got the highest card in this green suit. I'm going to win this trick. The next player follows suit. The next player throws this, and you said, well, how is that possible? I thought you have to follow suit. You do. But what this means is this player does not have green. And now you know that for the rest of the round, this player does not have green, they play red. Now, this institutes a new term called trump. At the beginning of the round, a certain suit, one of the four is going to be called trump. And if you can't follow suit and you throw down a trump, this beats the suit that was led. The last player still has green, so they have to play it. So he led with green, he followed green because he had to. He didn't have any green, he threw a red. This happens to be trump which trumps everything, and the last player had a green. So even though this player started with a, with a green 13, this player actually wins the trick, and then they get to lead the next trick. The player just won this last trick plays, and let's say they start with a blue 13. And let's say the next player follows suit with a blue 11. Ooh, he threw another high card. And let's say the next player throws a red four. So as you learned from last round, this is trump. So this is gonna beat both of these. But there's another thing called super trump. And it's one of the four suits and it's only the number one. And let's just say in this case, in this round, the super trump was a yellow one. And this last player plays the yellow one. In this case, blue is leading. And then he's still leading because he threw this, this thir the first guy, 13 over the 11. This player threw this, so this is winning right now because it's trumping these. But then the last player plays the only super trump this round, which is a yellow one, and this beats everything. So that's the basics of a trick-taking game of following suit, trump, and super trump. And you would basically play till everyone is out of cards, everyone's played all the rounds, and then you'd add up how many tricks you'd have, and you'd score some points. Now let's go to the first phase of the game, actually, because this will make more sense now. Everyone gets a bunch of these tokens of their character. So if I was this character, I'd get a whole handful of these tokens right here, and so on and so forth. Now whoever the dealer is, is going to place their token, and then everyone else will place a token clockwise. Now what happens is we have uh, one, two, three, four, five different categories. We have points, 
Super Trump, Trump, discard and first player. What this is gonna do is this is gonna set the trick taking stage. For example, we're gonna know who the first player is, but they'll also be the person to choose their teammate. Discarding will tell us how many cards we're gonna discard at the, at the end, at, right before we start. One or two or niet, which means none. Are we gonna pass one card to the left? Are we gonna discard one except anything that has the number one on it? Trump, which suit is gonna be the Trump? Or which card is gonna be the super Trump? Which one of these colored ones? Or maybe none, niet. And then how many points is each trick gonna be worth this round? So one at a time, people are gonna start going, it's like one guy, hey, I don't have a lot of reds. I'm going to cross out, you're saying, no, this cannot be Trump. And then somebody else comes out and goes, you know what? Yellow ones are not gonna be super Trump. This guy goes, you know what? I don't want this to be worth one point because I think I'm gonna do pretty good. The next guy goes, I don't want you to be first player. And the next guy goes, well, you know what? I don't want you to be first player. This will continue until every row has uh, all tokens except one, which basically leaves that. Now, it shows in the rules that you put these face down. It's not in the rules to this, but I actually prefer for people to leave their tokens out and show who voted against what, because I, I think that gives you some more information as opposed to memory. But anyway, here we go. So now we say this, this is the first player. He'll be the first person to leave the trick, but even more importantly, he gets to choose his teammate. Now in a four player game, this was the first player, he would select his teammate and maybe he selects this guy. So these two guys are gonna be teammates this turn, this round, and these two guys are gonna be teammates this round. But if there was only three players in the game, this player could do one of the two things. He could elect to be solo, and what happens is he's going against these two guys. So these two guys are gonna add up all their tricks at the end of the round and calculate their points and they will both get the same amount of points. This guy's all by himself, but since he's on an odd team, he gets this times two. And what this means is the points. So each trick that you have collected, remember each trick you get, you stack in front of you, you'll get four this round times two. So they'll be worth eight points, where each trick each of these guys gets is four points each. So it sort of balances it out in that right. Also, if there's five players, then this player gets to select which, uh, who's on his team. He gets to select him, and these two, and then these two are on the odd man out and they would get the bonus. Or he could go, I just wanna be with this guy and you three can take it and I get the bonus. So whatever team is smaller when there's an odd amount of players gets the bonus there and that's how you select your team with the first player. And we go through the rest discarding, yet nothing's getting discarded before we start the round. Yellow's gonna be Trump, the green one is gonna be Super Trump, and each trick is gonna be worth four points. And then we'd start that trick taking phase and one last thing to show you is, let's say I lead with that, someone else plays that and follows suit. And let's say someone else plays that. And let's say my opponent is the last person he plays this. Bec anytime you collect a one, if it's, if it's an opponent's one, it, it comes separate. So for example, I play this, everyone followed, this is an opponent. These three get flipped over as a trick. This is going to be worth however many points, in this case, four. The one stays by itself and this is equal to a trick. So this is four points and this is four points. So anytime you collect a one, from an opponent, it acts as an additional trick for points. And then, so basically you're gonna play a certain amount of rounds. So you can see here how many different rounds. Now each round is the niet phase and then the trick taking phase and that's one round. And you can play a certain amount of rounds depending on the amount of people, or you can just play it to a point total like 100 points and that's how you play niet. All right, well there is niet. Now I gotta say, yellow. Every time yellow touches a game, it's always way better than it used to be. And this is no difference, right? They, I don't know how they do it. They always seem to just make this imaginative, mystical artwork in their games that just draw you to it and make the game feel so fun and make you feel enveloped because of the, the artwork. And this game has amazing artwork. And it's just like the cards of the characters and some of the cards have artwork on them, but it's just like, man, that flavor just adds so much to what you know used to be more stale artwork. Now the game itself, trick-taking games is one of those things where you've got the purists that just wanna play the, 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 the normal trick-taking games and the other ones that like these twists, right? Now, a very popular trick-taking game, Diamonds came out last year, it was my card game of the year, so I do like trick-taking card games. And, and so how does this one compare to all this? Does it fit in niche? Now, overall, obviously the thing, this is a very basic trick-taking game. It's very true to the standard. There's a Trump, there's a Super Trump, and other than that, it's the same thing as most trick-taking games, except the thing that really makes this game, obviously, is that niet phase. And that really is the most interesting part of this game, and it's really interesting. I really love that part. You're, you know, when you're placing those tokens and you're trying to figure out and jockey for position on certain things, and which thing's more important for you, Super Trump, Trump. First player, discarding cards. Points, 
And it's interesting because at first you're gonna be like nixing out stuff that you don't have. Oh, first thing I do is I don't want red to be Trump. Well, everybody knows I have, I have like no reds. Or do they? Because as you start playing this game, you could throw that down as a bluff. Or it could be a double bluff. You, and you can start bluffing and you learn and the, the game can evolve over time and you play with the same group. And these things, it becomes really interesting. Now, I, I said in the overview that I like playing with those tokens up because I like being able to actually see what people are doing uh, because when it comes time to choose your team, that's really important, right? So uh, that is the most important, the, the coolest part of the game is, is that net phase. So overall, I really liked the game a lot. I did have a couple of issues with the game. Number one, the box is 30 minutes. This is not a 30 minute game. The game says to play, I think for three, even for three players, let's just say, like eight rounds, I believe, no, nine rounds. Nine rounds for three players. There is no way you're playing nine rounds of this in 30 minutes. Diamonds, which is a game where with three players, you also play six rounds, and that gets played in like 25 to 30 minutes, but there's no like net phase, it's just the trick-taking phase. So this actually takes about twice as long in Diamonds, in my opinion, in my experience. So if you're gonna play a three-player game, you're gonna play nine rounds, you're gonna be playing for at least an hour. Okay, so just being warned that. Now there is a variant, like I showed you, that, that plays to 100 points. And I like that, because that is right around a half hour you play to 100 points. It will vary depending on how many points each hand is. But the problem with that is, when you play less rounds, you're more apt to have the same team happen too many multiple times in a row. Especially if you're playing an odd amount, like with a three player game. Where it could happen that you only play three hands, three rounds, and you've gotten someone to 100 points, but it might happen that it's been the same teams for three times around. I mean, it can happen. And with four players, you know, you, if you pick the same team too often, the scoring becomes kind of weird. Also, if you're the one that's first player and you're in the lead, you can purposely just pick the person who's in second place, knowing that you're going to score the same and so they can't gain on you. And then it's like, well, you two are like working together, but that person that's your teammate knows they can't get past you. So in the later rounds, if, if you get first player, you can almost say who doesn't win or who, you know, it's, it's weird. So I don't like that it's too long and I don't like if you shorten the game, it has some weird things with the scoring. So I don't know, in the end, it's something that I'm gonna be playing a little bit more. I'm gonna be keeping it for a while because I have some friends that love trick-taking games. If you're one of those people that love trick-taking games enough that you'll just sit around and play it for an hour, hours at a time, this is awesome, and it gives you that 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 interesting twist to trick-taking games. But if you're looking for just a short, quick trick-taker filler to play in 15 or 30 minutes, this is I don't think this is it. This is a longer game, twice as long as Diamonds. So there it is. I like it. There's things I love about it. There's things I don't like about it. All in all, I'm a little bit like, it's good, but it's not one of my favorites because of those weird things of the different scoring and how long the game takes. But overall, it's, it's pretty fascinating when it comes to a trick-taking game, and that's it.